If you're a law firm owner and you feel like you're not getting the most out of the legal tech tools and software that you're using, that's probably because you aren't. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a simple framework for you to follow to understand exactly what you need in terms of the legal software, automation, and the overall tech stack to make your legal practice grow. Hey there, my name is Martin and I'm the CTO at Automation Followers. So why should you listen to me? When I was working as a director of product and AI at a law firm, I helped scale the company from five to 25 plus people in just 18 months. That's correct, from five to more than 25 people in just a year and a half by following the exact strategies and frameworks that I'm gonna be sharing in this video today. Spoiler alert. It's about making sure that your tech system aligns with your exact business and operational needs. Also sounding simple, most of the law firm owners that we work with get this wrong. Every law firm is different, right? You may be using already a lot of these tools, you know, clear management, case management, gobble for workflow automation, etc. But a lot of times we see with the clients that we work with is that their data is scattered, their tools are scattered, they're not optimizing their, their use of tools, or their tools don't talk with each other in the best manner possible, either because the integration is simply not there, or the integration is limited and doesn't adapt to their specific workflow. Ultimately, what we want to achieve is going from very much on the left, right, where it's a bit of a scramble, you're not really sure the, the, the case status at each point, you're not really sure who is doing what, to a streamlined workflow enabled by automations, and where data seamlessly syncs in all the different systems that you're using. And so my objective during the next few minutes will be to explain to you the process that we use with our clients to, uh, to understand what needs to be implemented on the tech side and how do we then make those decisions. And so in terms of the process, um, really it's understanding the customer journey, i.e. understanding what steps need to happen for your clients to go through from you know, discovering your firm to paying to leave an interview and completing the case, then choosing the right tools for the job, and then finally implementation. So first of all, understanding the customer journey. Before we jump into choosing the, the tools that we want to use for the job, uh, you know, for example, I see a lot of people asking in Facebook groups, so like, hey, you know, what is better, Locus or Lomatics? Okay, which, which case management platform is the best? And the thing is, as, as you may as well know, obviously working in the legal industry, if a client comes up to you, a potential lead comes up to you and says like, hey, like which option is better, A or B? A lot of time the answer is it depends. And so really the same happens here. To understand what you truly need is you need to make sure first that you understand your process, right? And the process that both your customer and your staff members go through to deliver the case. And so how this looks like is essentially a process map. You want to diagram out the full customer journey. So for example, on the lead acquisition side of things, it could be outlining all the different lead sources that my clients may be coming from, SEO, Facebook content, Google ads, etc. How do they then contact you, right? So for example, they land on the website, then they click, you know, schedule consultation, they take and go to a Calendly page where they can choose the desired service, etc., etc., etc. But then also doing the same on the service delivery, right? So what needs to happen for the case to be completed? For example, for onboarding, right? A new case is, is opened, a paralegal needs to extract the information from you know, an email, and for example, open a matter in my case, they need to set up a folder in Google Drive, they need to set up the required task on, to be completed in my case, and then for example, they need to request more information from the client, right? As you can see, this process can become quite granular, and obviously here, what you would also need to make sure is that your business processes that you have, right? Not even talking about tech, your business processes are defined as a firm, but we feel that that's a very useful first step to understand the capabilities and, and the needs that you would have when evaluating a new solution, right? Because otherwise, if you don't know what you need, you won't be able to make the right decision. The next step will be choosing the right tools. Here we think of it in kind of a level of hierarchy of tools that we can be stacking on top of each other to make sure that they adapt to your exact needs as a firm. And here really there are the four levels. The base level is your CRM and your case management systems, right? That can be, for example, Clear Grow and Clear Manage, Lomatics, Zoho, Airtable, etc. Obviously, some of them 
are more flexible from the get-go and so already allow you to to build in a bit more flexibility such for example Airtable and Zoho while others are a bit more opinionated let's say in the way they do things for example you know Clio Manage. Now that doesn't mean that one is better than another you know if your workflow adapts quite nicely to the way you know that Clio Manage works fantastic that means less complexity for you and less technical need that you'll have in terms of you know, updating the system. Now even if you're working with a more let's say limited system, there are still a lot of options for those three levels above that we can stack on top of. So for example, the second one would be specialized software. This can be scheduling solutions, such as for example, Calendly, which a lot of times provide more option and more flexible options in terms of how you can schedule events compared to the way you know, that you would get, for example, directly from Lomatics. Things, obviously, uh, tools like Gavel, right, for document automation and for more flexible intake forms. And you may have you know, a clear grow intake form, but then it doesn't really allow for that same level of flexibility, you know, conditional logic that you would expect from Gobble. And obviously, you know, for example, any other tools that you use, such as, you know, QuickBooks for accounting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So even if it's just these two levels, you can achieve quite a lot because a lot of time what happens is, well, the specialized software already have integrations with the tools you are using for your CRM and case management system, right? Just Brittany explained right now, Gobble integrates with Clear Manage, so you can be pulling information from one system to another. And here you don't need any you know, crazy technical setups. The step after that, right, if you want to automate more, or for example, if some of these integrations are either non-existent in between the tools that you are using, which can have, for example, happen with especially more these more generic systems such as Zoho and Airtable, a lot of times they won't have integrations with legal specific tools simply because there are no development resource to, to, to build out all of those development integrations on either side, really. That's where automation and data integration platforms come into play. So the two biggest players here are Make.com and Zapier. Essentially, what these platforms allow you to do is to say, okay, when one event happens in one software, let's say you know a new matter is open to clear manage, take certain set of actions in other software. So for example, generate a document through Gavel, you know, and upload it back to the matter in Clear Manage. In terms of the flexibility they can build there, it is it is really much more flexible than you expect out of the get-go in terms of automation in any of these platforms, simply because you then get the flexibility of, of you know creating custom objects and, and enable conditional logic that wouldn't be available in any of these softwares. Apart from Make and Zapier, which are more geared toward automation, there are also specific software solutions such as Skyvia, for example, that can be pulling data from one system to another for on a more continuous basis, for example, for reporting, right? So that if, for example, you're not happy with the, the reports that, I don't know, Zoho or Clio or Airtable provides to you, you can pull data out of the system using those tools, those data integration platforms. You can pull the information out of those tools, upload it to a more custom solution such as you know, Google BigQuery, for example, and then enable a more custom dashboard and Looker Studio, Power BI, et cetera, et cetera. So re really you can go quite, <laughs> quite crazy with all of these tools. Now, the ultimate level, the pinnacle, the flexibility that they can get is then custom code and app builders, right? So for example, an app builder would be a platform such as a software that Brittany just mentioned for building out a custom client portal for your clients. And obviously custom code solutions is you know, directly working with code. A lot of times, you know, Make and Zapier are simpler to build in because they already have a lot of predefined integrations and predefined functions in a no code or low code way, which means that you know, faster developing, you know, less chance of error, custom code is, is the ultimate flexibility. And so what happens is obviously as you go up the hierarchy, the flexibility, but then also at the same time, the technical complexity of the solution increases. And so whenever somebody asks, like which, you know, is Locos or Lomatics better? The thing is, it's not only Locos or Lomatics, it's also how do we integrate all of these other tools, right? If you're already using one software, instead of doing the whole migration, which, you know, is, is a painful process, can we add another tool on top that integrates nicely with it, either, you know, natively or sort of one of these automation platforms to enable the functionality without fully changing up the system, the, the system and the way that your stuff works. So let me give you an example, right? For example, we want to send an engagement letter automatically as soon as a new matter is open in Clio Manage. Right? We go to Clio and we say, hey, honestly, the Clio Manage template engine is a bit too basic, right? We, for example, cannot add that much you know, conditional logic in there, like formatting options are quite limited. So let's use Gavel. 
right? You build out the workflow in Gavel, you say, okay, that's, that works very nicely. The issue then is I can create a document with Gavel, but I need to manually trigger it, right? I need to manually, a staff member goes to, needs to go into the form, right? Even if there is that clear manage integration, right? And manually select the matter and then proceed to creating those documents and uploading back them back to Clio. That's where the third level comes in with the make.com automation platform, where we can generate the document with Gobble upon a change of stage in Clio Manage, all done automatically and all done in the background, which obviously means less time spent from your team on doing these tasks and obviously high accuracy because all of those, all of the conditions are already predefined. The second example would be a bit more advanced. So for example, auto saving notes. Uh, the other day I posted in a Facebook group, like, hey, Clio Managed Users, what is your, your biggest pain point? Some people said, like, Clio doesn't auto save notes, right? So if you, for example, have been typing out like big court here in notes, you refresh the page and disappears. So here, for example, there would be limited options, even with automation platforms to do so, but we can build a custom Chrome extension that auto save notes which I'll actually just show you in just a second. Fun fact, it was also built with Claude, a competitor of ChatGPT. So uh, you don't even need to be a super expert coder to, to build something like this now with all of this Gen AI solutions available on the market. So let me actually show you how this works. So if I open up a matter over here and I start typing something, a court note, and then if for some reason, you know, the, the, the browser closes, your computer restarts, whatever, if you refresh the page, and then try to create a new note, it's gone, right? Obviously not a big issue if it's a small note, but if it's <laughs> something larger, then it can be quite a time drain. So let me show you this Chrome extension that again was built probably in like eight hours with, with, with Claude. If we now create a new note over here, court note, and we now refresh, the extension automatically saves that as soon as you're making any changes. And so now if we reopen the note, as you can see, the information is back there and we can actually see it in a very nice user interface as well over here, right? I won't go into the details of how this is this integrated because it's too complex for, for, for this, but I just want to explain the different possibilities that there are for you to have a better idea of you know the landscape and what's possible. Now, if you like the walkthrough, we have recently opened a legal automation community on school.com. In here, you'll be able to mingle with other law firm owners interested in automation, be able to access all of the automation videos and templates that we are creating, both past and future ones, and also be able to inter directly interact with me and our team members and ask ourselves any specific questions that you may have. Joining that is completely free of charge. Just follow the link down below or in my bio to be able to join the community.